there is nothing wrong with your internet, do not attempt to adjust your settings. We are controlling the podcast. We control the squealing and the screams. We can make your heart flutter, your eyes blur from tears, or sharpen your mind to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit back. We are in control of what you hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your setting. You are about to experience the awe and mystery known as the female mind. You are now entering the Fangirl Zone. Welcome to Sci-Fi Talk on the Fangirl Zone, a podcast where we discuss shows on the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And today we'll be discussing episode eight of season one of The Ark. It's getting intense. Yes. And Definitely don't think, think they're going to make some... Proxima B by the end of the episode. I don't think so. <laughs> and just when you start thinking you're going to like a character, it's like, oh, nope. Yep. Damn it. Bane has switched again. Well, do we have any ratings news for this episode? Yes, we do. This episode brought in a 0.06 in adults 18 to 49 with... 0.403 million viewers, dropping it down to the 95th rated cable show for the day. That's a big drop, even though the viewers changed by 10,000. So it's makes so no weird. sense. These ratings are killing. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about episode six. Every single person matters. A new polarizing figure enters the equation as the crew suffers technical difficulties. Because what are we if we're not suffering technical difficulties? Yes, that's been the ongoing theme throughout the season so far. And we open with Lieutenant Lane helping William Trust acclimate acclimate to his surroundings. Suddenly, Helena Trust, his wife, knocks Lane unconscious. She perceives him to be a threat. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Bryce and Ava lounge in bed post-coitus. Didn't Are see they that supposed cut. to be in, like, one of those little bunks? Yes. It's like, uh, okay, that's teeny tiny. Yeah, teeny tiny and open to everybody, so. Oh, they had, like, a shade that pulled down. We did see right. that, but still, it's like, uh, how are you going to get dressed easily, too? Right. <laughs> Lieutenant Garnett calls Bryson Eva to the bridge. She can't find Lane and wants to know if they've spotted him. Naturally, Bryce cheekily inserts as many sexual in, innuendos into the conversation as possible. Alicia presents her and Angus's finding from Arc 3's video footage to Garnett, Eva, Bryce, and Felix. Everyone is bewildered by the fact that Arc 15, a vessel that should have been years behind them, is out and about and attacking other Ark. Next, Alicia finds Angus in his natural habitat among his veggies. He is the veggie father, after all. <laughs> she asks him for assistance on a Garnett assignment. However, Kelly interrupts their conversation. She blatantly flirts with Angus and tries to shut out Alicia. Kelly asks Angus to accompany her to a funeral service for the victims of the Arc 3 catastrophe. He declines Alicia's request and provides support for his new pal. Something about Kelly just mm, doesn't seem quite right. Oh my gosh, I want to slap her. Yeah. Meanwhile, we see a flashback featuring William and Elena on Earth when William was booted from his company courtesy of Evelyn Maddox. Once they're in their vehicle, Helena injects her husband with the sedatives, claiming she's doing this for him. Helena was the one who ensured their passage on Arc 1. Things were getting too dicey for the, on Earth for them. Well, it may not be any better on Arc 1. No. Not the way it's going. No. Felix, Alicia, Bryce, and Jelena search for Lane. They split up to cover more ground on the ship. We have Dr. Kabir conducting an autopsy on the man from Arc 3 who died on the operating table. And Kabir tearfully examines the body. You can tell that she's blaming herself for the death as she's still enduring withdrawal symptoms from her substance addiction. Angus and Kelly enter the med bay with the former asking the good doctor if they can take Kelly's friend to the NOR, you know, to composite him. Kabir insists that she must finish the autopsy. And I about fell over when Angus like, does it really matter? Yeah. It's like, wow, dude. First of all, you have the girl next to you whose friend that is. And second, the doctor who 
You can clearly see she's upset. Yes. And we see Dr. Kabir say every single person matters. And right there, I'm like, oh, maybe this will make a difference for Kelly. But I don't think so. No, probably not. Angus insensitively and gleefully chats about composting Kelly's friend, which rightfully doesn't sit well with her. And it finally hits him over the head. Right. It's like, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> next thing we know, we see Lane wake up next to William and Helena standing over him. And he introduces himself and reveals that, unfortunately, all of the superior officers seeing to trust protection are, well, dead. And Lane is the only person they can trust. And again, kind of iffy, in my opinion, there, because yes. you don't know what's going on. Ava and Alicia work on retrofitting their circuit board with the Maddox faster than light speed tech in the engine room. And Alicia rambles about how fun space facts are when you're, you know, doing science on one thing. You find all this other stuff as she's perusing ARC's three archives. Yeah. There's cures for certain diseases, but she didn't get to all of them. But could Clampkins be one? Later, we have Kabir entering Kat's quarters for a therapy session. And Kat starts said session, as she does with everything about her. Yep. It's like, really? Would you stop? Hey, can you remove this mole? Oh, my God. Yeah. It's not a mole. It's a freckle. We can't have any imperfections on us now, can we? Anyway, Kabir discloses her belief that she killed the patient during surgery because she was shaking. <sighs> okay, but... I don't think that was the reason, but okay. Yeah. She also divulges her substance abuse, to which Kat replies with her knowledge of Kabir's struggles. Kat knows the signs of addiction all too well. She vows to help Kabir work through this dark point in her this dark point in her life. Poor Kabir, she's had a rough go of it since awakening from cryo sleep. I'm starting to wonder how much sleep she's had in this po at this point. Right. Yeah. Not a whole lot. I also kind of was looking at Kat side eye when she's yes. like, "Oh, you have." drugs that were brought over give me the key and everything has to go through me it's like yeah i don't know if that's no, good i don't think so next thing we see lane ask williams about the secret room full of animal dna samples that he discovered a few episodes before and helena is responsible for that and ensuring the vials made it onto arc one because she knew how important it was for him this information was concealed from the general public for fear of an uproar then felix ava and yelena chance upon the chambers containing the trust cryopods. Helena greets Felix by name, indicating they know each other while Lane and William stand behind her. That was unexpected. Oh, absolutely unexpected, especially because she knew Felix. Yeah. But Felix didn't look happy to see either you know, one of see them. them. No, yeah. he did not. Then Felix, Felix escorts the trust to the bridge to meet Garnett. Upon their arrival, Bryce, in a rage, immediately decks William. He vehemently... Oh. What was what? with walking around like, you know, high priests or something? Yes. I thought that was a little odd, too. But Bryce vehemently directs his ire toward William, blaming him for his friends, his friend contracting Clampkins. Garnett orders Bryce to depart the bridge to cool off for a spell. How's that for a warm welcome? Garnett confronts Lane for hiding this pertinent information from her. He claims he wanted to keep a lid on the crew's collective anger, but Garnett insists she still should have known. Helena requests that Felix be her and William's bodyguard. We see another flashback featuring the trust couple on Earth. Felix serves as their bodyguard, even taking a bullet for William amid a volatile protest outside the trust headquarters. Back on the ship, Felix blames Helena for the deaths of his husband and daughter. However, Helena believes she did him a favor by securing him a position on Arc 1. Meanwhile, Alicia sits with Angus in the mess hall and excitedly delivers a play-by-play -play of her day, unaware he's having lunch with Kelly. She pulls a Regina George in Mean Girls, changing Angus's hairstyle. Kelly asks what Alicia thinks of it. Go on, tell Angus he looks sexy with his hair pushed back. <laughs> On the bridge, Garnett asks Lane for a more detailed explanation regarding his withholding of the trust location on the ship. Then she boots him from the bridge and removes his rank of lieutenant. Now he's simply Spencer Lane. Uh, you get a sense of a villain origin story might be afoot. He seems like he's been the villain since the beginning anyway. Yes. William wonders how to fit in on the ship when everyone despises him. 
Elena suggests he makes himself indispensable to the crew. When he spots Alicia and Eva on the bridge, he inserts himself into the conversation. William learns that Alicia and Ava successfully rid of, retrofitted their circuit board with the Maddox FTL tech. They believe if they attempt FTL, it can work. William strongly advises against this, but Barnett gives the go-ahead. Maybe if he had given a little bit more reason other than, you know, she likes to do shortcuts. Well, you know what? Somebody else liked to do shortcuts on this ship. We almost died. Okay. Right. After they engage the FTL, some peculiar effects take root. Everyone appears to be warped, almost if they're phasing in and out of reality. According to live science, special relativ relativity states that if something travels faster than light, it would move backward in time. This makes sense, considering we see past version of each person carrying out tasks or making a statement that happened minutes before the ship engaged FTL. William accompanies Ava and Alicia to the engine room to implement the fail-safe and uninstall the retrofit, or at least turn it off for a while. Yeah. Of course, the trio struggles to stay on task as we see past versions of themselves sporadically appearing and intermingling with their present selves. Finally, they manage to remove Maddox Tech from their circuit board. After the incident, Garnett visits the trust in their quarters and apologizes to William for not trusting him initially. William dispenses sage leadership wisdom to the young lieutenant. I don't know. I felt like it was kind of condescending myself. Yes, I did too. Meanwhile, Bryce and Eva get into an argument regarding Bryce's acceptance of his impending death from Clampkins. Ava doesn't think he should give in, especially if Arc 3's archive contains a cure. Bryce orders Eva to leave it be and then breaks things off. Well, we'll see about that. He just yes. stormed off. Yeah. Cat accepts an unexpected visitor to her chambers, William, which we had learned earlier was catting around with everyone, apparently. Yeah. Well, apparently Cat was one he was catting around with because they're having an affair on Earth before Arc 1 departed. And Cat pledges her loyalty to William while the later... The latter questions her regarding the Juno project. Well, what the hell was that? Yes. The shift in Cat from vapid, self-obsessed influencer to, well, this is quite intriguing, to say the least. And it makes me wonder, what's up with this? What's yeah. up with that? After his private encounter with Cat, which there was a little boom chicka wah wah. Yes, there was. <laughs> William runs into Lane in the hallway, looking like British Steve Jobs. <laughs> William throws his support behind Lane, claiming he disagrees with Garnett's decision to revoke his military rank. Oh, great. This is where things are going to go pear-shaped for real. Yep. yep. Lane expresses his loyalty to William because he doesn't have any other. He doesn't have loyalty to anyone else, so why not? Yep. He reveals he's no longer tethered to anyone else on the ship. Uh-oh, this seems really bad. Lane, and the, Lane the bad guy is officially coming, we think. Yep. So, I don't know. What were your thoughts overall on this episode? Well, I think we're making a turn from external issues to internal issues. The first seven episodes were all external issues with the ship. And now we're going to have some internal issues with the people, I'm afraid. Just after we finally got the crew halfway calmed down. Right, because I do think it's very divided. So yeah. with the trust on board, it's going to be ugly. way more divided. Yeah, I, I have to agree. So we did get um, some feedback. This was from episode one. This is from Opus. This show is growing on me. The cast is likable, which seems to be a big ask from Hollywood these days. Oh, I totally agree with you right there, Opus. It has a very CW feel, but CW pre-2020, which is a way to say campy, but in a way that just feels nice to turn off the brain and just enjoy some easy viewing. Couldn't agree more with him. Yes, I, I agree that it's not like super serious, but it has some serious moments, but it does have a very mystery feel. So I guess we're going to find out the whodunit kind of thing happening. Right. But thank you, Opus, for shooting us some feedback. We appreciate all the feedback that we get. Um, glad everybody's out there actually watching this. Shoot us a message. Let us know what you think. Steve, why don't you tell them how and when to send us feedback? All right. We'd love to hear your thoughts on each and every episode this season. Our deadline for feedback is 6 p.m. Eastern every Friday during the season. 
You can send your feedback via email or audio to contact us at fangirlzone.com. Please review and rate us on iTunes and any other platform you use for your podcast. With good ratings and reviews, it helps other fans of the show find us as there are several other ARC podcasts out there. Tell your friends, and we do hope you're enjoying our podcast. And don't forget to check out the other great Fangirl Zone podcasts. You can check everything out at www.fangirlzone.com. You have all the ways to get a hold of us on our contacts page. You have our podcast page. There's also links to all the ways you can listen to our podcast because we are all over the place. Opus, for instance, was listening to us on YouTube. So for this episode of Sci-Fi Talk, I'm Steve. Narrowly escaping death. It really does drive a person into bed. And I'm Sean Fangirl S. And until next time.